Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time to have a look at a new game called Prime Mover. This game is coming out today on Steam and it is all about creating circuits in order to solve problems. In the first portion of this episode we're gonna go through the components and then we're gonna try to solve a bunch of more difficult puzzles. So just stay with me as we go through the more easier concepts in order to understand what this game is about. The first puzzle is called a connect. All we have to do is connect some stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. We can place a bunch of cables in such a manner and we can also delete them using the left and right mouse buttons. In order to test our contraptions, we can click this button and then we can see some numbers are going from one side to the other. So there is always an input and there is an output. Let's go ahead and create our own connection just like that around the machine and we can go ahead and do this a little bit faster. You can see the concept is pretty simple. So let's go ahead and learn about other components. We have unlocked a new component right here, a bridge. What we have to do is send A to D and then send B to C. So let's go ahead and do that. A to D, we want to connect it like so, for instance. Of course, you can do it the shortest way possible. And then a B needs to go to C. So let's go ahead and do that. Perfect. Run. And you can see the concept right here. However, it is going to get a little bit more complex after a while. The next component. We have to send A to C, then send B to C. What we have here is something that lets us combine a couple of circuits. Right here we can make this face any way we want and all we have to do is connect it right there for instance and then connect uh, B to there. Oh geez. We can uh, rotate this around and then we want to go ahead and output this to C. So let's go ahead and see what happens right there. Now here we are going to have a slight issue. You can see the ones that are coming from the right side actually have priority. In our case this was actually what we wanted. But if we had it connected the other way around we would have needed to switch this. Next up we have the amplifier which is the last one of the first tutorial sections. We have the duplicator right there. Now this is an interesting gadget and is gonna make things possible in uh, quite a few interesting ways. So what we want to do is send A to B and C. So the input is gonna be duplicated into two different directions. Now the interesting thing is that all of these can actually act as inputs and outputs. So imagine for instance the input, uh, this actually needs to go over here. Just imagine the input is coming from C, then we would be duplicating towards A and B at this point. However, the input is coming from A and it's going to duplicate to B and C, naturally. And there we go. Okay, with that out of the way, let's open up the next section. This is the last tutorial section. I'm actually going to skip this. You can have a look at the cutscenes once you have purchased the game yourself. The separator is the next uh, tutorial section and now here we learn about uh, another sorted component which is capable of sorting minus zero and pluses. However, there are a bunch of conditions attached to it. A is never negative. So that is just the statement there. If A is positive, send A to B. So everything that is zero we want to destroy and everything else we want to send to B. So let's uh, first of all uh, make this main connection here, but in between we want to do something. So let's grab one of these. Uh, it's never negative, which means if we input from here, then uh, the negative numbers would be going backwards. But since nothing is negative, this is not going to happen. However, we need to do this a little bit lower so we have the space for it. Let's make this connection right here. Zero is going up and we want to destroy the zeros. But everything that is positive, we want to send to B. Something like that. Let's go ahead and run this and you can see it was successful. Next up we have the distributor right here and of course this is basically a toggle in order to send something uh, to one direction and then the next item is going to go into the other direction. So if we added this for instance right here uh, what we need to do is send A to B and D. So A is gonna go right here and maybe we can even uh, toggle this, something like that. So it's first going to uh, B right here and then it is going to the right there. So let's see this happen. The first one is going up, which is perfect. Second one going down, etc, etc. So now we know about this component. 
Next up, we have the transformer. Uh, here we have a plus or minus calculation. We can add one to the current value of a number. The task is send a plus one to b and send c minus one to d. So all we have to do is send it over there and in between somewhere right there, we have to make a plus. And then I guess we can do the same thing right here, but here we want to switch it around in order for it to be a subtraction. I think that's all we have to do, right? Yeah, there we go. Easy peasy. And the flipper is also an interesting component. We can actually place it here and it's gonna look into a certain direction. So for instance, we can turn it around in order to overlap with this component. And then every time an item hits, it's gonna change the state of the component. Now what this puzzle wants us to do is actually add one and subtract one to every other value of A. So the first value we want to add, then the second value we want to subtract and so on and so forth. Now this thing here is at the wrong location. Let's add it right there. And this one here we want to rotate around so it is influencing this. So when we touch this the plus sign is gonna switch to minus and then it's gonna continue on its merry way. So we possibly even have to start with minus. Let's actually test this out. Uh, though, no, actually we have to start with plus because it's gonna switch into minus. No, let's start with minus. So plus five is gonna swap that into a plus and therefore it's gonna be plus six and so on and so forth. And then it's gonna alternate and exactly do what we wanted it to do. Perfect, what else do we need to know about the gator? Okay, interesting. Uh, this is actually a locking mechanism right here. This is going to be interesting. So what we want to do is send A to D from up top here to down here and then send B to D. So we need to have this path locked here until we have done A. Now there are just one component in each of them. So that means all we have to do is basically make this connection here and then we have to go towards this button and then we want to add one of those in order to combine the components. This uh, can actually go directly into here. I believe this is gonna be enough time though. Yeah, it's gonna be enough time because first we unlock it, then we're gonna go here and this is A. So A is gonna be first at D and then a B is coming in from right here. Let's actually see this happen. B is coming right here, but it's gonna be stopped because this tile is locked. And then this is coming along. There we go. It's hitting the button and it has the advantage of a shorter route there. Next a section unlock. There's actually more to learn about. Totally forgot. Differentiator. First, output all of A to C and D. Then output all of B to C and D. Okay, so we're gonna need a duplicator to C and D. Let's place that bad boy right here. This is gonna be the output for C and this is gonna be the output for D. So A has to come first and I already know with these guys that from the sides you actually have the advantage. So if we add a arrow right there, then if we add this line from the side, this is gonna have the advantage for some reason. And if we add a line from the top, this is gonna come after it. So let's actually test this out. We will be able to see, oh, actually there is a cable missing right there. Okay, there we go. We are first duplicating A to C and D and you can see the top one had to wait for the other ones to continue. And there we go. We have completed this puzzle as well. Well, these are not really puzzles. This is still tutorial section. You will see the puzzles are actually extremely more advanced. Now you can already see we have much more at our disposal. We also have the delete all inputs and uh, what we have to do is send A to B but add one to every other value of A. So that means we're gonna need a toggle right there. Let's actually add that. So the first one uh, is probably gonna require, let's see, yeah, it's a plus three and we need to add one in order to get a plus four. So the first one is going down and it's gonna need to be, there we go, added with plus one. So we can actually make this connection right there and this is going to the same output. So we can have our connector right there. Connect this up and connect this up to there. I guess this is gonna be good. So the first one is going here, adding plus one. The second one is going up, adding nothing. Should be working out in my opinion. Let's actually see this. Yeah, there we go. 
Now, this is one of my most favorite component right here. What we can do with this is actually add an entire different circuit board. So clicking this, we have an entire space in order to do some circuitry. So in this case, we have to send D to A, but delete every other number. Now, of course, we don't have the space to do that quite here. But what we can do is add the connection right there. And of course, we're coming in from the right side. So this is where they will be coming in. That means we have to toggle and every other one we want to delete. And uh, now let's see, we probably want to start with not deleting anything. So this is going to go towards the top and the bottom one is going to be deleted right there. So all we have to do is connect this from the side right there and go all the way up to the output. And if we start this, we will be able to see that this is actually what is happening. The first one is going up right there. The second one is being deleted and so on and so forth. And they are just alternating. And of course, it's doing that in real time ticks here. So pretty good. You can see this is going to get a lot more complex once we understand what it is about. Next up, we have a reset functionality. This basically means uh, we can only continue a certain sequence once we have done the previous one. So in this case, we need to send A to B. Let's actually add up this connection A to B and then C to D right there. And we will be able to see first we have to finish a reset stage in order for the system to be able to continue. So this is just a little demonstration for you to understand this concept. There we go. We are done. And I think this has actually been it. Now comes the more difficult puzzles. Let's take on uh, the first puzzle right here, the clock. What we have to do right here is generate all numbers from D two plus one in order. So uh, the first one would be plus 10 and then we have to do plus nine plus eight plus seven until we reach plus one. Essentially that means we need to sort out all the numbers that are a plus and numbers that are zero or minus are gonna be ignored. Okay, first things first, how do we exactly sort out this shebang if we let the numbers coming from here? Then we have a plus 10, but then we would, uh, you know, duplicate it, send the 10 up and then subtract one number. We would have to send this number back to here. Ah, yeah, until it reaches zero. Okay, so that is actually perfect. If we turn this around and then swap the plus and the minus, then we should be able to do this. So zero would be deleted right there. And everything that is plus goes into this direction. And we want to duplicate it. What is the duplicator right there? One number is going to go up directly into the output and the other one needs to be subtracted. Uh, that is the wrong thing. I want to use subtract right there. So we decrease it by one and then we need to go back into this input right here. So how can we do that? We could actually swap this around a little bit. Uh, come on, let me do that. There we go. So the deletion happens at the top now and we can actually use this one here in order to add a junction. So the minus goes directly back into this and it is going to be checked again. If it is still plus, then it's going back to the duplication functionality and so on and so forth. And once we reach zero, then it's going to be deleted, which means the reset thingy majingy should pop off and the next number should come in. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So let's see this happen. 10 is going right here and it is positive. So it's being duplicated and it's also being subtracted. There we go. 10 goes in here. Same thing with 9 and so on and so forth. Let's see what happens once we reach a 0. There we have the 1 and uh, once it reaches 0, hopefully it does it fast enough. Yeah, there we go. It goes ahead and it's being deleted and we have the next number coming in. So we can actually speed this up now. That is a satisfactory solution, I would say. And uh, there we go. Finished. Okay, one more puzzle. Let's see, what can we do? We could do... Um, well, we cannot really tell what it is about just by the name. B is never zero. Okay, if B is positive, send plus one to D. And if B is negative, send minus one to D. Oh, interesting. So let's see. B needs to go right there directly to D. But in between, we need to check if it is positive or negative. And if it is negative, it needs to be minus one. Okay. 
B is never zero. That means we can actually do a check right here. It's never going to be zero, so it's never going back. If it is minus, it is going into this direction, and if it is plus, it goes into this direction. If it is minus, then we want to send it through a loop that gets it all the way up to minus one. So let's see, we could add another loop right here. I'm just gonna add this here and we're gonna connect it up. Now let's think about this. Uh, minus is going here, so we cannot have it like that. It's never going to be plus, but at a certain point it is going to be uh, zero. So as long as it is still minus, we want to decrease uh, the number, I guess, or increase it actually, we want to add to it. So I could actually add that right here. And once we add it to it, we want to go back. And as soon as we reached zero, we want to subtract one and send it to the output. So let's make this go all the way up here. And I guess right here, we would need a bridge, which is fine. We can send it to right there. And then it's going back into the loop until it reaches zero. And once we reach zero, we want to subtract one. And there we have our final output. So this would be going all the way down to here and give us our output. Let's actually test this out with minus 18 because uh, the numbers are coming in too fast. I might actually need to stop them. Oh yeah, this is an issue. Now the question is, how do I make the input right here stop until one number is done? That is a good question. Maybe we could do something like that. We have like a locked tile right here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to unlock the tile. Then we want to go on top of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense, right? Because then we can go right here. Here. Okay, then this component needs to be lowered a little bit. Darn it, I don't really have the space for this shebang. So what we can do is use one of those guys. So we're coming in from the left side. No, from the right, of course. We're adding one of those components, then a locked tile right there. We're going into this, going to the locked tile because it just opened. And then we're continuing on our merry way, something like that. However, once the number is done through the process, we need to take a little detour and activate the second number. So we kind of are coming from below here, going down finally. Not sure how this is exactly going to work. We need an output here. We need to make this a little bit better. So let's actually take this and we want to copy it to here. So we have a little bit more space and we're coming from the top. The input is the top. So we need to swap that. This is going to be our input. Then we're going towards the left side. That is good, but we should also be coming from below once we are done with the process, which is right here. So we're coming from below to this which means we need to re-enable this guy again. So now we have two pathways where we influence this locked tile. So this will be going all the way up here. So that means the output is the right side, which is perfect because this can be D. Theoretically, that should work. What is our output here? The left side. So this would be coming up right there. And now we actually need to have a little bit more space here. So maybe let's add this guy right there. We need to swap this. This is coming from up here. There we go. And then we still have the minus sides, but uh, let's actually swap these right there. I think that's how it's supposed to be. Okay, uh, let's actually test this out. 18 is going in right here and it is unlocking the tile and then, oh. So once they go over this, they are unlocking it. And then when they pass it, they are locking it again. So that's how they work. Okay, let me think of a solution for this. The solution could be as simple as removing this and starting the entire contraption with the tile unlocked. Let's actually test this out. So the numbers are coming in from here and the first one locked it. Yeah, there we go. And then once it is done with the process here, it will be going up again and unlocking the next tile. So let's actually see this happen. This needs to go down all the way to zero and then it's gonna add plus one. And come on, there we go. And now it is actually going back, unlocking the next one. And it is exiting, of course, into the right slot. So this is good. All we have to do is the plus direction. 
So plus will be coming from right here. Now let's see, how did I do that? Uh, we need to have a way to actually connect this better. So let me maybe move a couple of things. There we go. This might leave me just enough space to take care of things. If it is a positive number, then we want to subtract a little something. So let's add a subtract functionality, but then we need to check whether or not it is zero. So let's add that. It is uh, gonna be positive, so the minus needs to be here, but we want to swap this around a little bit. So as long as it's still positive, that is good, it can go back into the loop. Actually, I don't really have enough space, so this is gonna be a little bit unorganized, but we can still do it using this. So it's going back right here, and this is going back into the loop. Can we do something like that? No, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, let's add the entire thing in right there, including the minus. I should have done this for the first contraption as well. This is just much more overviewish. So we're coming in from the top, then we want to subtract one. Then we want to check whether or not it is still positive. If it is still positive, then we want to make it go back into the loop right here. Using one of those, you go back into the loop. Perfect. And if it is a zero, then we want to add plus one. And this is our output on the right side. Uh, let's make the output at the bottom then. Then once we have that, we want to go ahead and uh, join this line right here. This is actually easy. Oh, we could have had our output on the right side as well. So maybe let's do that because that is the shorter and better way. Okay, let's test this out. Number 18, we already saw this. Everything else is stopped right here. 18 is counting down right now. And once we reach the number zero, which is gonna be momentarily right there, we will be seeing a change in direction. We're going back to plus one here. Oh, is that right? No, this should be a minus one. So this needs to change. Okay, once again, there we go. We have the zero once again, it is switching directions, but this time it is a minus. So there we go, we're going up and right here we're activating the next one, perfect. And this is going to the output. Now this is a minus one already, so this is gonna be a very quick circle here. And it is activating the next one, which is a plus one. So this is going into the other square right there. Adding and plus one, okay, that works out. And activating the next one. Yeah, we did it, guys. And that was already a little bit more complex. But you can see, you can actually also add more of these areas into areas. So the potential for the circuitry is unlimited actually in this case. There we go, we're picking up on speed right here as you can see. But the problem has been solved. Pretty darn good, I have to say. Uh, we took 1916 ticks actually, holy but geez. But pretty good, I'm pretty happy with the idea. Now, just to give you an idea, I'm not going to solve any more of these puzzles, but uh, there are a couple of areas, as you can see. So there are plenty of puzzles currently, and you have to unlock all of these areas. We're just going to have a look at the next few puzzles. I'm not going to solve them, though. If A is plus 1, send B to D. If A is 0, send C to D. Then delete all values of A. So just thinking about this, holy cow, that is nuts. We also have the hill cleaner, which says send A to B and remove every zero. So that sounds a little bit easier. Transistor is the last one in this section and it says if A is plus one, send C to B. If A is zero, delete C. Cool, so I'm definitely gonna be playing this off camera a little bit for myself, but I hope I was able to actually give you a good insight uh, of what this game has to offer. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time, and hopefully I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.